Oh, hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. Sorry I'm late. My raccoon got out this morning. I'll start in a second. I just need to check the local news. I only check it once a year, and today's the day. So let's see what's been happening for the past 365 days. What? No. No. No! Welcome to Google. Hosted by Carl, where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to TV. Oh man, oh man, oh man, this isn't good. There's so much bad stuff happening all over the world. It just makes me sad. No, I'm not going to let this make me sad. I'm not. No! What's the use? Oh, man. Oh! <laughs> okay, Carl. Pull yourself together. How do we fight sadness? Let's look it up. Chocolate? Can't do that. Roller coasters? Afraid of heights. Holding puppies? I'm allergic to cuteness. <laughs> happiness! The cure to sadness is happiness. So how do I become happy? Well, if sad news makes me sad, then happy news should make me happy. Boom! Let's search for the happiest stories in news history. Alrighty, looks like this story comes from California, Rocky Mountain State. Apparently there's a bear who was enormously fluffy, and he was very hungry. So hungry that he climbed into a big dumpster, <laughs> ate so much, <laughs> and he got stuck. Then some people called animal control and saved the bear. They were super nice, and the bear got out safe. No one was hurt. <laughs> That's a good story. <laughs> Look how fluffy he is. I just want to hug him, but I can't because the bear would probably eat me. Story number two. This story is about a man who finds a hurt hummingbird outside. Aw, <laughs> don't crack off. He apparently helped this bird and nursed it back to health. One day the bird became strong enough and the man released it back into the wild. Great, now we'll never see each other again. <laughs> Wait a second. It says that the bird named Buzz comes back to his house once a year. He even lands back in his hands and loves being petted. Oh man, that's such a good story. I sure am feeling better now. Hey Carl. Bear! Oh, hey. Hey, <laughs> hey Cassie. Are you okay? Yeah, I wasn't expecting you. Oh, sorry. How are you? Not bad. I guess I was just kind of bummed out. Really? Why? Well, I looked at the news today. Oh, got it. Yeah, that's not always the best idea. You're telling me. Now I'm in a weird funk. That's not good. Do you want to talk about the story this week? <sighs> Sure. All right, let's take a look at Zephaniah. Zephaniah, what? Zephaniah. Zepha papaya? Zeph. Zeph. Uh. Uh. Naya. Naya. Zephaniah. Zephanthapis mbahapo. Anyways, Zephaniah was a prophet and God spoke to him all the time. That's so cool. It sure is. Now at this time, the people of Judah weren't listening to God. Well, that's not good. What were they doing? They were not following God. Instead, they were actually making idols and worshiping them instead. Oh no, haven't they learned their lesson by now? Kids, don't make idols. Also, don't make mud pies and eat them, no matter how good they look. Yeah, so God told Zephaniah a very special message. A message that told them that God was going to destroy the land. You see, the people were worshiping the sun, the stars, and other fake idols, like an idol named Molech. They had forgotten about God and chosen not to follow the commandments that were given to them. Man, so God was going to destroy the land and everyone in it? Well, not completely. You see, there were still a few people who loved God with all their hearts and souls. And because of that, they would not be part of that punishment. That's a relief. God does not mess around when it comes to idols. But that's because the people were shown so many times that God is the one true God who loved them even in the tough times. You couldn't be more right, Carl. As long as we turn our eyes to God and love those around us, we know we're doing what's right. So all I have to do is look in the direction of heaven? It's kind of the first step. When things are tough, think of God, ask God for help, and read the Bible for extra strength. There are a ton of things you can do. Phew! Glad I don't have to rely on these eyeballs to find God. I'm a little nearsighted. Or farsighted. I can't remember which sighted I am. But that 
felt like a lot of pressure. Yep, when you spend time with God, it helps you trust. And when times get tough, that trust will help you get through it. And we could trust God to give us the strength to endure those tough times. Yeah, I love knowing that when times are tough, I can trust God. Cassie, <laughs> wait just a second. You did it. Did what? You just said our big idea! Today's big idea is, when times are tough, I can trust God. So let's say it out loud on the count of three, okay? One. Two. Three. When times are tough, I can trust God. Yes, I can. And so can Cass. So can you. Trust God. Yes. Well, I'm glad you stopped by today, Cassie. I just hate getting so emotional. No more crying for me. Until next year, news. No way. What? Did you see this photo of a chimpanzee in a diaper holding a baby kitten? Oh my god, that is so cute. Oh, that's so cute. All right, kids, I'll see you next week. That's adorable! Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of...